We are in our lovely car club, streetcar car club, uh, car here. Much better idea than um, everybody owning a car individually. Whoever thought of that was ridiculous. Um, anyway, we're on an all day uh, whistle stop tour, uh, trailing around after the uh, UK's climate change minister, Ed Miliband, who's um, campaigning in five uh, marginal seats. And uh, we're going to trail around after him and grill him on everything to do with climate change. Uh, the first one being Swindon. And the reason that I've decided to come out of my retirement that I was in post Age of Stupid is that basically the election, the general election in the UK next week is absolutely crucial for whether or not, you know, we solve uh, climate change and prevent the, you know, biggest human catastrophe of all time. Because we've only got that a very short amount of time. These next few years are the most important years ever from that point of view. And also, the UK is actually one of the leading countries in the whole world arguing for a really strong international deal. And so, the politicians we elect here and the decision we as a country make next week is going to have a disproportionately large effect on you know, whether or not the planet is habitable uh, in a few decades' time. I think it's probably true to say that almost everybody in the environmental movement would like the Greens to be in power. That would be the dream. But uh, also everybody realises that that's not going to happen next week. So given that, um, I think it's also true to say that we must not have the Tories. <laughs> and that leaves uh, you know, Labour and Lib Dem and... Uh, you know, Ed Miliband did a fantastic job in, in Copenhagen and has done good, some good things uh, like um, changing the UK coal policy, although they're also doing bad things like expanding Heathrow, which the Lib Dems are saying they wouldn't do. So, you know, maybe the best outcome might be a Lib Dem Labour alliance. So let's go and find Ed. Are you ready on off button is yeah. yeah. the mute button. Is it on actually? Is it on? Yeah, it is on, yeah. Good. Don't say anything you might regret. Right, are we gonna head in? You're wearing red. <laughs> oh shit. I really didn't mean to. Okay, Very no, good. I'm doing this up. I'm red with a green tinge green. of green. I'm going back to green. <laughs> Franny Armstrong and I have done, I think, seven or eight. When I look at the manifestos for this election, though, I don't find David. We really good. value the environment. We don't want David Cameron to run think our next government should ensure John Duff's government think. Well, I think it's the opposite, that it shows that we can all live without flying. <laughs> <laughs> the sky's and no other country in the world has said this: is that we will limit aviation emissions by 2050. The days of aviation. We're going to have Franny in the picture. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Really good. That was good, wasn't it? It's excellent. Really good. Really good question. Web stream works. Everyone's good. tweeting it. Excellent. Lovely to see you. See thanks. You that was soon. fantastic. Yeah. And you Take were. See you soon. Bye. Yeah, thanks a lot. Bye. How did you enjoy that? I thought it was quite a laugh, actually. Oh, it was good, wasn't it? Didn't you? <laughs> it was good. I like interrupting you. You're against Heathrow, as we all know, and yet you have to pretend you're for it. That must be so annoying, isn't it? I wouldn't be able to do it. I deny your purpose. I deny your purpose. See, I wouldn't be able to do that, that you can do. Towing the line. Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> Good. Would you mind? I think you don't talk politics. I think, I fear we may. I fear we may. Dickel Parker, our next station call, it is in 15 minutes time. Change chair, Dickel Parker, it says it's walks through battery. Do you tweet yourself or do you go other people tweet me? <laughs> I do really, I suppose. You've got a better. Um, you, you've got a better what, tweet. Do I've just got the old. Uh, uh, that's rubbish, yeah. Do you haven't moved to iPhone yet, then? Full credit goes to Ed Miliband, uh, Ed Miliband for the Ed and Franny road trip. More there politicians you go. should do this and be prepared to answer tough questions. See? Who said that? My friend or yours? What do you think about climate change? Yeah, that's oh, it's a good Yeah. So you do, you do, but you kind of believe it? To a certain degree, I mean, a natural phenomenon as well, yeah. I think, you know, uh, as far as, you know, we're yeah. aware. I don't think but it's solely our fault. I think but the, the bit that's not our fault, we can't do anything yeah. about. Yeah. The only thing that we can influence is what yeah, we do. Yeah, we can only do so much. Yeah, and the natural is like this, and our influence is like this. Yeah. So, yeah. 300,000 people a year are dying of climate change at the moment. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> Where does that figure come from? From the Global if I, Humanitarian if Forum. If I said that, I would get into deep trouble. From the Global Humanitarian Forum, Kofi Annan's lot. They came out with that like last March. Brilliant figure. It's a brilliant figure. And that number is obviously going to go up and up and up. And brilliant, it's a horrific figure. <laughs> I mean brilliant in the horrific sense. <laughs>
I can't believe that doesn't end up. Well, that's why I do these, th th that's why I do these things with you, you see, because I then learn quite a lot. Do you think so? Yeah. Okay, what's your team? <laughs> Excuse me, carbon dioxide, <laughs> I think I know the answer to that. Did you tweet? I didn't see it. I did tweet. I said you were asking me an annoying question. <laughs> <laughs> I think I definitely won round one in Swindon. It's not about winning for it's about taking part. In other words, I won round one and now we're heading to Oxford. OK, yeah. Ed, I've got about yeah. 200 questions okay. for you from Good. Age of Stupid Fans. Let's try and answer as many of them as possible. Should we do it as, should should it, to Oxford, I don't think I can answer two of the full Should we do it really fast? Yeah. Climate change is not only an environmental issue, but a human tragedy, as I you know. I agree with that. Will you commit to providing the UK's fair share of finance to the developing world in addition to existing commitments on overseas development aid? Yes. Hi, Ed. I've been impressed by your commitment to climate change matters. This is Jerry Simon. If Labour fails to stay in government, how will you sustain or increase that commitment when no longer in the ministerial role? We've got to make sure Labour stays in government. <laughs> That's the, this is the big choice of this election with yeah. Labour and the Tories. Uh, and they would, you know, when you when you look at the issues where they're in the wrong place on onshore renewables, like here's in your film, yeah. Europe, the climate change deniers. Yeah. the planning rules, all of that, they're just in the wrong place on this. And that's, that's part of the reason why I'm going around the country trying to persuade people they've got to, you know, they've got to vote for Labour MPs so that we have a, a Labour government. That's from a teacher called yeah. Mr. A.P. Harmsworth from the Leeds School in Cambridge. Head, Head of, of physics. physics. You've got a physics A-level, I know I that. I do. I know, but I don't remember. And I got an A, actually, but I don't remember it. Okay. My brother got a D. Really? Yeah. <laughs> This school is doing 10-10 and they're on the course to do their target. Fantastic. Okay, as a teacher tasked with moving the only boarding school in Cambridge onto a more sustainable course, please could you tell me what I should say to kids who find it so much easier to listen to Jeremy Clarkson's Global Warming is a Myth Gang rather than less entertaining scientists or politicians who quote or misquote the science. In Basically, other words, we need more skeptics. Jeremy Clarkson's of the climate, climate change, change movement. Yeah, yeah. Because we're all a bit grim and uh, <laughs> sort of uh, square. So, Ed, how's your 10-10 commitment coming along personally? Uh, we're four months in. What it's changes not, have you made? It's not bad. Um, we I, we got a new boiler system. Right, good. Uh, which is uh, it's called weatherizing boiler. And you've got carbon. that in this year. And we've got that in this year. Great. So that's good. How's uh, so your travelling? That, so that's personal good. Traveling. My personal travelling. I've been very good since right. I got this job. No, <laughs> no personal flights at all. Right, good. Franny esque. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> very nice. Uh, we're just arriving in Oxford. We're talking about Copenhagen now. Apparently, a load of students. I think. Some scientists believe that it's not getting as bad as being portrayed by the pro-climate law. I think one nice way of looking at it is if 99 doctors said to you, you've got cancer and if you don't act very, very quickly, you're going to die. And one says, don't worry about those 99, they're all in a conspiracy, you know, and that one happened to be paid for by the tobacco industry perhaps. Are you going to believe that 99 or are you going to believe the one, you know? And we are talking about all of life on Earth at stake. So, you know, when there is a consensus in the science on something as important as this, then we just have to, it would be just crazy to not go with the consensus. It's not only a problem that, that about, you know, 10% of the people of the country care passionately about this, and, and you know, other that's people not, care. That's not true, because you're the government, you can do what you want. With the Iraq war, two million people marched against it, and then you went ahead, not you, but they went ahead with it anyway. No, so why do we need all of the, but, or everybody to point. But, but just the, make the Um, is this a roundabout? No. We've already, we've already gone wrong, hang on. Let's take a right and then we'll know whether we're going the right way. Because no, if so you go left, I'm pretty sure you go. <laughs> oh, well, hang on. Left or right? No, no. I, uh, it's got to be left, surely. I think you go right, actually. I think you go right. Then it's got to be left. I think, you go, think of the election. You go right. <laughs> Dan, I'm sorry, it's left. <laughs> it's left. It is actually definitively left. <laughs> now, where do you stand on a much more democratic electoral system? Well, I, I, it's because a good, Parliament doesn't reflect the people of this country. Well, I agree with you uh, about that, and that's why we've said that we will have a referendum uh, in, the, in the next 18 months after we, if we're elected uh, on a replacement for the current system. But I think there's a real issue for green, uh, potential green voters at this election on the current electoral system, which is, do you vote? If you vote for any of the other parties, you are more likely, there's just no question about this, to have David Cameron as your Prime Minister. He won't do electoral reform and he won't do the right things on climate change. So I, I take your point, and actually, that's why we're committed to changing the system. 
So we've just rocked Milton Keynes. Ed reckons that's our best headline gig yet. And now we're heading to Bedford. You basically go straight ahead on the roundabout and then you go for 40 miles, basically. Number 23 and there it is. Hello, are you expecting us? Oh no, you're number 71, you're not expecting us. We're in the wrong house. <laughs> number 23, <laughs> that way. Hello, are you, are you expecting me? Yes, yes. We're, Hello, we're nice expecting to see you. you. How fantastic, and sandwiches too. I would love a cup of tea. Thank you very much. I'm on the school council. What things can we start doing to help the environment? Excellent question. Yeah. Does your school do anything at the moment, you know, on the environment? Does it do recycling, for example? I, I genuinely think it will, this will be very close here, here and it could make all the difference, not just here, and that is very important, but also um, nationally as well. And look forward to coming back to Bed Bedford with Patrick as the um, uh, MP and forward to that. Um, carrying on the battle against yeah. climate change with the Labour government. Yeah, yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Yeah, Biodiversity, so, good or bad? Good. And what are you doing about it? We're doing lots. Doing? Um, it's a Hillary Benton area, um, but it is very important. We do take it very seriously, but let's move on. Okay, uh, from Mike Franks. Can government guarantee that no subsidy from the taxpayer will go to the nuclear industry? Yes. It's a climate skeptic question. Let's skip the skeptics. No, we should, listen, we, should, we should address the skeptics. Okay. Brian, okay, so Brian Orr. Or. How confident, confident is Ed? Ed that polar ice melt, methane release, forest dieback, and suppressing activity of oceanic plankton have not already been set in train, an irreversible chain of events leading to catastrophic rise in I'm so sorry, Brian Orr. That is not, not a skeptic. It's not so a climate skeptic. I was reading it too clearly. Uh, he's saying, is it too he's late? He's asking basically. a good question. Yeah. Uh, look, I don't think it is too late, and uh, I think we can make a difference. And I think that there's, you know, we mustn't get into a doom and gloom mindset. Robin Hood tax going to do it? This is we're going to have an, we want an international levy on uh, on banking because that is that is something that is achievable. And we did push forward with we could push the so-called Tobin tax. There isn't at the moment international support for that, but I think we can have an international tax on banking and global levy. Right, and that's what we're talking about. Gordon said this year in the debate really? last night. Yeah. So Tobin tax is Robin Hood tax by any other name, isn't it? A what? Yeah. It, it changed its name to Robin Hood tax. Yeah. When you say Tobin, yeah, yeah. It's the same Sorry, name. yeah. No, no, great. Ed, you never wear your 1010 tag, even though I know you sign up. I'm sorry. And you are cutting your emissions, aren't you? You're doing all stuff. So like, here's your tag. Thank you very much. I don't much. want to see it off before the election. Okay. Not only that, but look, we've got 22 tags here. Fantastic. For your cabinet member chums. I will pass them all. I'm expecting to see them all because Gordon Brown was on the election debate the other day. They asked him what he's doing to cut his commissions personally. He's forgotten. Okay, uh, we all, they did all sign up, so I will pass them on. Thank you very much. Bye, Ed. Bye. Good luck. Cheers. <laughs> well, I have to say, I really didn't expect that to happen. I really thought I was pretty set in my uh, views. But I think they've got a good point that, um, that a green vote in this election might be a wasted vote. And the most important thing is to make sure the Tories are not in. Um, and so on, the, on those marginal seats, like the ones we visited today, Probably, I hate to say that Ed might be right, probably, you know, serious environmentalists should vote Labour just this once. Is that very bad, Dan? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Are oh, all my environmentalist friends going to hate me? Yeah. Oh, shit. Right, I'm going to get my house in 10 minutes that way. I'll see you soon. Bye.